we continue to look at the Word of God. So with the title of the, the result of the absence of the hi- historical education. So we'll be going over the Judges chapter 17. Verse 1. Now a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, The elder eleven hundred shekels of silver that were taken from you and about which I heard you utter a curse, I have that silver with me. I took it. Then his mother said, The Lord bless you, my son. When he returned the eleven hundred shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrated my silver to the Lord for my son. To make an image of a lady with silver, I will give it back to you. So after he returned the silver to his mother, she took two hundred shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith, who used them to make an idol. And it was put in Micah's house. Now this man Micah had a shrine, and he made an airport and some household gods, and installed one of his sons as his priest. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. The book of Judges is historically the period after the occupation of the Canaan, uh, the promised land. It is about 50 years after the Exodus. It's been about 600 years since the promise to Abraham. It is the history of the the era when people began to live in the land. They were sent after receiving a mission. However, it is not a story of victorious living in the land of mission, but a story of forgetting the promise with God and gradually breaking down in a vicious cycle of living according to their own desires and what is right in their thought. The book of Judges contains about 360 years history. Judges chapter 1 to 2 shows how the Canaan war was not perfect and com- not completed what kind of life the next generation began to live. In chapter 3 to 16 is a history of forgetting the mission and living a life of disobedience and the story of being invaded and trampled on as a result. It was a time to live like the people of promise with God. Israel walked through the history of destruction, not prosperity. The cause is 90% of clumsy obedience incomplete obedience and selective obedience and absence of the education that failed to convey God's sincerity to the next generation. Chapter 2 verse 11 to 12 and chapter 3 verse 7 to 8 briefly but accurately tell how Israel fell. Chapter 2 verse 11 says, then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baal. 12. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped the various gods of the people. The God of their ancestor, who had brought them out of Egypt, they followed and worshipped the various gods of people around them. They arose the Lord's anger. They lived according to their own desire and what was right in their opinion, turning away from God. The result is, chapter 2 verse 13, Because they forsook him and served Baal and Ashtoreth, in his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hand of their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. So, in the blessed land, the land of mission to build the kingdom of God, because Israel turned away from God, 
They live the life of being plundered and trampled on. How badly did Israel live that even God let the people pay the great cost of pain? In order to know the situation of that era, today we will look at the story from chapter 17 to last chapter. The story of chapter 17 to 21 is a later part, but looking at the historical period of the events, it tells about the social phenomenon and spiritual flow of the era in the extension of the conquest of Canaan, which is uh, incompletely finished in chapter 1 and 2. So, when reading Judges, read chapter 1 and 2, then read chapter 17 to 21 first, then you can go back to chapter 3 to 16. Then you will be able to understand historical situation of the Judges era is easier. In chapter 17 to 18, the story of a person named Mika, and in chapter 19 to 21, the story of the Levites and concubine. Referring to the chapter 18, the tribe of Dan is looking for a land to settle. Considering that Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the grandson of Aaron was serving as the priest of Israel. It can be assumed that it was not so long after the settlement of Canaan. When one generation is counted 30 years, it can be inferred during the first to second generation after the conquest of the Canaan. We need to note that the Levites are involved in both of the stories. The Levites had no land allotted and supposed to be scattered among the tribe throughout Canaan. They are the people who are entrusted with the mission of teaching and keeping God's command while dwelling with the tribes of Israel. But looking at these two cases, the Levites, the Levites forgot the mission they were sent to and left the ministry to find a way to live for survival. People who were able to live on their own land got a concubine. The Levites are supposed to live with the offering the people give to the temple. Running around for survival mean it can be predicted that the people did not give the right tithe or offerings according to God's law. Anyway, what clear thing is, for whatever reason, the Levites who were responsible for the spiritual life of the Israelites did not do their job properly. In other words, even the Levites lived according to their own thought. Because the Levites lost their mission, they lived a life like a Canaanite, which is secular life. Even today, the spiritual level of our time appears when we look at the life of pastors and leaders and believers who must keep the mission entrusted to them by God. If pastors and leaders in the church losing the mission of teaching the word of God and trying to become a popular celebrity or like an event manager that members enjoy rather than teach how to catch fish but that pastor becomes catch, becomes a fisherman for them or collecting money with fluent speech and skill and eventually become an architect, build the church building taller, bigger, and with new style continuing to expand by another building, by another. So the leader of the church, pastors who must spiritually present the right path to the congregation, are you focusing on the mission given in the Bible or focus on other things? 
it will be the barometer that shows exactly where that error is going spiritually. Do you think how pastors live today? In the church of this era, what are the things that we are most concerning about and focusing on? People have no interest in the mission God has given. Everyone lives for a little better in the world. You know what level of spiritual life in this era is? A generation that forgot the mission to live on this earth and forgot the word of God without teaching us intention through the Bible in the church. A generation that only pursue easy and fun things to attract more people. Generation where saints forget the value of living and imitate the secular world by following the secular values. You have to discern which generation you live in. So through the story of Judges chapter 17 to 21, the generation that has been called is distorted and forget, forgot God's call and live life like the world. We need to see if our era is healthy or not. I hope you can discern the flow of such a time through the stories in today's text. The first story, man named Micah, the tribe of Ephraim, he made an idol at his home and built a fairly well-equipped temple. Even hiring a Levite from the tribe of Judah was looking for a place to live as the personal priest of his home. Chapter 17, verse 1 to 5. Now a man named Micah from the hill country of Ephraim said to his mother, The 1100 shekels of silver that were taken from you and about which I heard you utter a curse. I have the silver with me. I took it. Then his mother said, The Lord bless you, my son. When he returned the 1100 shekels of silver to his mother, she said, I solemnly consecrate my silver to the Lord for my son. To make an image overlaid with silver, I will give it back to you. So after he returned the silver to his mother, She took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith who used them to make the the idol and it was put in Micah's house. Now this man Micah had a shrine and he made an effort and some household gods and installed one of his sons as his priest. If you read this part, you can be so confused as to what is scripture talking about. In fact, that it is the normal. Indeed, this text shows exactly spiritual states of the judges was. The son who stolen his mother's money told his mother honestly and handed over over the money and saying, Be blessed by the Lord. Since it is money that was lost and found, he said that he would make a new statue for his son with his, this money. So this money is said to be a consecrate to the Lord. And there is a sanctuary in a private house also made the effort and teraphim Furthermore, he appointed the priest he has hired at will. Among the tribe of Levi, only the descendant of Aaron could be the priest. You can see that there is not even such a concept. So not much time has passed since the settlement of Canaan. The succeeding generation does not even know the right meaning of the word. Already secularized and degenerated. So, if you have any idea about Leviticus, when you hear the apple priest and shrine, 
or you think it's very it's religious, but if you check up with the Leviticus, this is actually not none of them is used for used according to the Leviticus, which is a God command God given command and the rule and order. So there is a actually the word called God, but it is not the Jehovah God mentioned in the Bible. It was just a divine being or an idol that people think and call as they please. Apport is the the uniform what the high priest used to wear, but they even served the apport itself and regard it as a god. This situation clearly shows the spiritual condition of the Israelites in the judge's time. Outer Gamon Epot, the high priest wore when performing his duty, was also used like an idol. They see God the same level as the guardian spirit or superstitious teraphim to protect their families. It seems that people are very religious and seeking God. They are looking for a God such priest and pastor who will bless them and protect them. Why does this happen? For whatever reason, there is no correct education for the word of God. The people have religiousness to seek God, but they are creating superstition that are not God. And the Levites, who must hold up the temple of God and teach the word correctly, you can see that the person who hired him as the priest of the house, like a personal shaman, who pray for personal blessing. As I meditate on this text, uh, the things I'm afraid, now the appearance of this Mika family, when you see the Levites higher in this house, compared to today's generation we live in, it seems very religious. But a pastor who compromised with greed by losing the mission of teaching the Bible and most of the church members seem to pursue only blessing and peace. These days the, the MG generation also says that it is too common to find a fortune teller. They have a lot of anxiety and worries about problems such as employment, job change and marriage. In order to find the answer to this concern, they are looking for shamanism. Some people call a fortune teller in Gangnam, so recomm- recommended by a friend for marriage problem and asked for the reservation. However, he made the reservation for next year because it was a fully booked for the year. Even on YouTube, People are flocking to channel run by shamans, fortune tellers on the street. Today's fortunes published in the newspapers and magazines. People say it's just for fun and they are afraid of their uncertain future, living a life of struggling in such uh, superstitions. People say it's the, the age of science Not only old people, but also the MG generation want to know the purpose and the reason to live on this land even by the power of shamanism. Those who live in this darkness, rather than teaching the reason for their existence, the way, the purpose of life and the reason to live, but they are looking for the easy way, just like the world. Worship where we must gather to know God's will and where God's will must be proclaimed. Thread the word of God so easy as requested by people. What kind of mind are you coming to the church? Are you truly living the way according to the word of God which God has called you for? Think deeply about it. A man named Mika made an effort and a teraphim. He built a shrine and hired Levites. Chapter 17, last verse, 17 verse 13, then Mika said, Now I know that the Lord will bless me. 
since the Levites have become my priest, because he does not know the true intention of God, gave us law and regulations. Imagine God as he like, create God as he wants. With religious facilities, there he appointed even the Levites as priests, and now expect the law will bless you. This is the misunderstanding God, losing the mission, and living completely in an illusion. This was the look of Judges' era. Perhaps we see no difference in our time today. About why this generation came to be like this, is said in chapter 17, verse 6 said, In those days there was no king in Israel, so every man did what was right in their own eye. Was there really no king in Israel? No, God was king. But they did not take God as king. The biggest problem of this age is the rejection of God's kingship. That's why they disregard the law and regulation given by God the king. They forgot the, the intention of God's word. That's how he forgot God's will contained in the Lord's command and statutes. So he didn't did what he thought right. God gave law and regulation and the identity of the priest of the nation. He sent to the land of the mission. Because he forgot his own identity and turned away from the law and regulation and didn't know the life of faith becomes a life of superstition. Now in chapter 17 is showing through this incident what the spiritual condition was like in the era of the judges. If you look at the chapter 18, that continue, it shows the history of tribe, of tribe of Dan, who had not yet conquered their own land, giving up the land allotted to them and going to the northern region. In the case of the tribe of Dan, referring to Judges first, they could not drive out the Amorite in the area where they were assigned. Rather, they were chased by them and fled to the mountain region. Then, even if they don't have the land right now, because God promised is clear, if they gradually grew stronger and gathered the wisdom and obeyed to take over the land, obviously the land would have become their land. The disobedience of this generation have lost their mission and are looking for an easy and comfortable way to live according to their own idea. It is shown through the tribe of Dan. The tribe of Dan took away the shrine idol of Mika's family. The hired priest is taken away by force and made the priest of their own tribe. The Levites who worked as the priest the house of Mika thought that it would be better to be the priest of one tribe than the priest of one family. He is willing to become priest of the tribe of Dan. God had already placed all the tribe of Levi throughout the seventeen the twelve tribes and made them responsible for them. This shows a society that moves according to the individual ambition and greed. Because the mission and goals are different, ignoring the word and changing the God's given mission, then living a life for good. Therefore, if you think it's hard to live a life of obeying God's word, everyone will live a life like a Mika, a life like a tribe of Dan. Churches, saints, and pastors who have lost their mission, as in the story of chapter 17 to 18, being swayed by circumstances. They live by adapting God to their own will and distorting God's will, just because they want to live on their own. Therefore, do not forget that we are the saints entrusted the mission. 
Don't change your goal and mission just because it's hard to do right now. Let's make it an opportunity for spiritual reversal to become a vessel that God makes. The land of Cana we were sent to is not an easy and comfortable land. It is a rough and dark land. That's why God sent us as a light that illuminates the way forward in the darkness. Therefore, do not blame the circumstances in front of you. Rather than blaming, let us ask God how to obey and boldly move forward according to the value of the word. Don't make excuses. Let it be an opportunity to broaden your end and enlarge your capacity. God has clearly told us it's not the environment and circumstances we find there. It is because that has forgotten God's word, promise, and dreams. Do not forget that God is faithful and never changing God. Chapter 17 to 18 shows it's not a life of victory but religious indulgence and falling into the idolatry. It clearly shows a life lost its mission. The second story from chapter 17 to 21 is a story of Levi's and concubine. You can see how certain influences are affecting the next generation. You can see how certain influences are affecting the next generation. The meaning of Levi's had a concubine is now equivalent to saying that pastor has a concubine. In those days, in case a woman uh, couldn't have a, a woman was a barren, they it could they could have a concubine but based on the situation we can see it wasn't the situation but it was a Levi's greed and the desire. The Levi's who live in the region of the tribe of Ephraim got a concubine from the Bethlehem in Judah. The concubine fled to her parents house after having an affair with a man in her neighborhood. While the, the Levites try to bring back such a woman, he is threatened by the resident of the Kibwa in the Benjamin region. Chapter 19, verse 22. While they were resting happily, the bad man of the town came and surrounded the house. And knocking on the door and shouting at the old man, the owner of the house, Bring the man out of the old, out of the house. We should have some relationship with him. Because of this threat, the owner of the house stopped them. But because these people, full of lust, won back down, the Levites forcibly sent the concubine out to them. So these gangsters took this concubine and raped her on a whole night. The tribe involved are the tribe of Ephraim and Judah. The tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Judah refers to the tribe that represent the people of Israel. In this case, the Levites is at the center of the, such a dirty story. It shows the spiritual condition of this era of judges. When the Levites was about to leave in the morning, he saw after seeing her concubine being raped the whole night, she eventually collapsed and died. And he carried the body back to her hometown. This man cut her body into twelve pieces and sent them to each tribe of Israel. So all the tribe of Israel who saw this terrible situation accident gather in Mizpah and try to solve the problem in chapter 20. But there is no record of entire nation gathering to learn and teach the word of God. But the whole nation took part in this event. But the tribe of Benjamin are not trying to solve the problem rather depending on the gangster and in Gibeah, in Gibeah region, a war broke out between the tribes in this 
battle, the tribe of Benjamin, all were killed but 600 men. The tribe of Israel became to disappear at first. The tribe of Benjamin won and liked about 40,000 40, allied troops. Eventually collapsed, almost all soldiers died. Only about 600 men remained. The tribe of Benjamin was commanded by God to judge them clearly through law and regulation. Rather, they would protect those who committed the crime. The tribes who waged war for discipline did not see the tribe of Benjamin as brother's tribe, but as if retaliation to enemy, they would slaughter brutally to dry the seed of the same brother tribe. If you refer to chapter 20 verse 48, it's like a war between the Canaanites and Haram. Everything belongs to the tribe of Benjamin. It kills both people and livestock. This is the story of chapter 20 and in chapter 21 there are scenes of them regretting what they did and dealing with this. It is not completely so according to God's will. In this process of re- rectification, the story that do not seem right. So the absence of education, the word God told us to teach, and the result of not properly educating God's intention and His will, as time goes by, it gradually appears in the form of monster and eventually leads to destruction. Even in the story of chapter 19 to 21, there are things that pray to God and build an altar. If you read this story, thinking carefully about what the cause was from the beginning, like the people of Micah and the tribe of Dan in chapter 17 to 18, you will see that the same story is being repeated as people who have forgotten God's command and promises. Chapter 17 to 18 shows the problem of the individual chapters 19 to 21 are. The problem of the tribe and nation of that society. The story begins with Levi's marrying his concubine. The concubine cheated on him. Then he didn't know the mistake and resolved it according to the word. The Levites went to look for a concubine again. In the meantime, he met a gangster. Eventually the woman, the concubine was raped and died. But in order to solve this, the the Levites told them to bring the criminal gangster. But the tribe of Benjamin is trying to protect the gangster who committed a crime of rape and murder because they belong to them. If you cut this story one by one, it looks like you did, uh, they did their best to, to deal with the, and the problems, but you can see that the dominoes of sin continue to fall seriously because of the incomplete obedience. The cause of these things that happen in chapter 17 to 18 followed by chapter 19 to 21 is exactly the same. Chapter 21 and verse 25. At that time there was no king in Israel, so each man did what was right in his own eyes. All problems start from forgetting the history God works with his people. So neglecting God's command and promises and forgetting God's true heart and intention. So whether the saints are recalling the history of God's work with his people through the word, so whether you neglect his orders and promises or meet them closely, it is very important story of faith. All problem in life begins with forgetting the history with God and not knowing the word. Not knowing the word of God begins the life of forgetting the history of walking with God, neglecting the day by day, neglecting it, and not meditating on it. The biggest problem in today's Christianity is not knowing the history of walking with God because people have not learned the entire Bible 
in the context of history. The beginning of the problem that appear in all church or and the problem of individual and believers because the people forgot the historical memory of God who accompanied them until they came to this place and they lost God's heart. God's sincere commands and promise remain only as low religious regulation and ways to receive blessing. It begins where you misunderstand God's sincerity. The only thing that you can know God's sincerity is the Bible and history. But church these days are centered not on the word but on the music, performance, mysterious experience and fullness of the emotion. The word has become out of interest. So instead of reading the word and knowing God's will, no matter how he live his life, he replace it by praying and having some mystical experience without knowing God's will at all and shouting out your request to be, and uh, you call it uh, regard as a prayer as if in other religion. Most say they come to church, but over 90% of them have never re- even read a Bible. Also, there are many cases where most Christians do not read even one chapter of the Bible a day. If you neglect the word like that, later your thought will be become stronger. If you do so, you will think that your thoughts are the truth. If you live day by day with your own thought, you will lose the reason for being cold. Then no matter how much the church try to live up to its mission, only complain and argument. Last week there was a news of the murder case back in Korea. One of the girl killed another girl. And uh, the girl who, the, who murdered and never been outside uh, uh, outside uh, her house over five years and never been involved to the community and society. God never created us like this. Today, also, you, we found, often found the news and uh, there's a dating violence and kill the the lover or to kill the person they loved. It's a, because they they are doing this society now, they're doing what they think right on their own eyes. Same as judges period. We remember at the time of Exodus the Israelites experienced the overwhelming joy but they when their environment situation was difficult, they forgot God's works of help and uh, God's promise and they start complaining and when problem arises, they lose interest in obeying word of God. They resent the leader Moses and threaten him. Furthermore, they even try to kill Moses and set up another leader to return to Egypt. Unfortunately, in this difficult time, the whole people show their strength to unite in things that were contrary to God's will. According to God's will, we cannot unite. But their own convenience, easily we can find they easily become one. Why it is so easy to become one with complaints and not one with the mission? It is because... We forgot God's command and promise while neglecting the word of God and being filled with it, our own greed. Gradually forgetting the history God has done and forgetting the thrill and gratitude they experienced and walk with joy. The problems you see now is also because you are looking for uh, the leader who can say what you want to hear. This amazing victory of the Canaan only lasts, uh, no, no, not even last more than one generation. It feels like yesterday they confess uh, God guided their life. They confess they will live for the kingdom of God and for His will. 
But now they're asking just for the power from the God. And uh, try to manipulate God for their own lust and own desire. There's only one reason and origin of this kind of phenomenon. Because you gradually forgot and neglected the word of God. So, the judges, book of Judges shows why these era of judges collapsed so powerlessly at a time when it should have been very important light and soul. Because they do not properly educate the history that God has done for his people. In the end, as time goes by, they became weaker and more evil and greedy, then finally collapses. So while meditating on these events on, of chapter 17 to 21, I hope you to gain the wisdom by examining why this era has become the era of judges at the time when we should be blessed and prosper. I hope you understand how the church and its members should live and uh, what traps they are falling into. So today we cover chapter chapters um, and the historical atmosphere and flow of judges around as a result of life of the judges, what happened. Let's look at the chapter 3 two, through chapter 16 next week. I want to meditate and pray with the word we share today. The beginning of the vicious circle of judges was a very small thing. What was the cause of the, the small looks? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 said, Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then your path will be prosperous and you will prosper. They did not follow the will of God by taking the word of God close to them every day and engraving it in their heart. You, we, we, make a, we may often make an excuse that life is too busy and difficult. That is the way you collapse and fall down. You probably think that one or two days it should be alright without meditating the word of God because you are busy. But it turned it into one week and two weeks and it goes one year and two years. And maybe you've forgotten the reason why you have to read and meditate the Word of God. Those kind of, kind of attitude turn this blessing into curses, prosperity into ruin, and settlement into wandering. Many Christians today still neglect and delayed, but has no guilty on keeping the word of God f- close to them. 95 statistics shows 95% of the Christian not reading the even a page of the ch- a chapter of the word and no meditating. The huge dam collapsing from the little tiny crack. The prosperous and blessing dam is collapsing small negligence and delaying of meditating the word of God. That is the message of the judges. It says, there was no king, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. It's not because there was no king. They did not try to serve God as a king. This is a rejection to serve God as a king and rejection of his Ruling and ignoring. Do not forget about the fact. And uh, do not make, uh, stop making excuses if you... Mm-hmm.